Hey, 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 how's, how's it cat? going? Hey. Yeah, that's my cat. We're here, and the cat's here, my cat's here. Argo's named after the boat. And we're all rock and rolling. Cool. Okay, so we're here, we're late. Only an hour late, almost. My fault. Yeah, it's all your fault, Slater. It's your fault. Paul wasn't totally five minutes slower, faster than you at all. <laughs> Please, ten. Ten, ten at least. Ten at least. Okay. So. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's get all started. As Slater puts with his volume and puts it check, lower. Check. Mike, check. Is it's too low? even lower than it was before, man. <laughs> this is how we like to start the show, some technical details. <laughs> just, just go on without me. Okay, so let's uh, start up with uh, our awesome stuff. Do people remember what happened last week? I blocked it out. Well, last week you guys did an investigation. Yeah, we investigated the... Was it Finvar? Or did we, are we heading to Finvar now? Yes, you, you started with investigating uh, the... The aquatic research station, now that you had chased off the bad guys and dealt with the horrors of the unknown, you failed oh so many tests. I don't think I passed one. Yeah, well, it was... right, our dice turn. Yeah, the, the dice turn was just terrifyingly abrupt. It just, it was, it was terrible. And there you found out, you investigated a big alien radio thing and found out that it sent basically an imprint on huge chunk of the data flow and it was going to basically be trying to send a message back to aliens so whenever somebody found the aliens they would already know about whatever's going on and all this sort of stuff you also found out that the marquis de rue went to una and um what else did you find out anything else we found out that there was a guy working on the inside to help them steal the uh vehicles yes so you went to una to investigate that and you met that dude and a name of uh saul katarin who's a real nice guy and was he though was he really and then you figured out that he had uh wh how, what did he do anybody remember he sent a message a secret message to two different places yes one was yeah, to, right. yeah, he, he basically sent a message to Finyar, which is Finvar, which is a neighboring planet. Um, let's show you else. the systems map so you can see. Someone else in the facility. So you are currently uh, here. And... Thanks, Argo. He really needed to flip the door open. Anyways, <laughs> my cat's just kicking indoors because he's a badass like that. <laughs> and you want to go there. So... <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> so... Yes, so you are currently on Daoni an ocean giant and uh, class 2 ocean giant to be precise and you traced a signal that was sent to Finvar which is also the location that the uh, it's space elevator it's uh, fin the Finvar lift has the had a bombing at it so it is on your contract list so mm. you were very excited to see that you were on the right track and that's, I think, where we left off. Did you guys get any renown? Did you encounter any, have any significant scenes with members of a new faction? No, not really. No. Uh, did you gain any contacts? Well, you met this fellow. Uh, did any, I don't know if anybody really had much of a building contacts with this guy kind of yeah, situation. Yeah. No, like we were, we were, we were going to try to really put the screws to him, but then he sent those signals, and that's we kind of chased those instead of talking to him further. 
Yeah, he contacted his boss, and then you ratted him out, and uh, he went down for it. So I wouldn't necessarily say contact uh, so much as to say rival. Well, I mean, if you think that he's a contact of some sort, then one of you can take him if you wish and put him on your sheet. Otherwise, we shall move on Remember to the next part. A group of guys that tried to bust you for being sneaky, yeah, you need a favor. Well, it's, rivals are a type of contact on the list, so... Uh, you might need you to lean in or something there, Slater. You're still real quiet. Still really quiet, eh? Oh, that's a little better. Uh, yes, so if you think you had some meaningful conversation with him that would make him like a contact that you could harass and or see later, then you can add him. Although I think the only person who actually spoke to him was Zatol. Yeah, but we shared looks. Okay, well, add him. <laughs> Me and Saul... Gross. Add Sol Qatar. It's a. I'll spell his name in the chat. So how is this? Is this level good? That's a little mm -hmm. bit better. You should just turn it all the way hell up, man. However high you can go, because you have this never been too loud. Is that good? That's better. This is better. All right. So that's his name, and he is. Uh, from XMI and he would be a rival so that would allow you if you put him down on your sheet you would raise uh, XMI faction to two dice that should be a thing no deep so if you add him oh, I'm not going to I didn't I didn't actually talk to him okay hey, it's up who to talked you. to him who talked to him so it's a tall you guys don't give a shit about that guy that's totally fine you don't have to yeah, yeah. I don't give any shits whatsoever okay okay Tur now we go to achievements this is gaining you guys charge so first you get one everybody add charge you'll notice the sheets now have a break so that you should less easily click the wrong freaking thing when adding charge where's the break there's a space between capacity and charge now oh i see oh there is yeah so you can increase, everybody can increase their charge by one. And then if your crew created turmoil that altered the status quo last session by changing the world around them to make it better or worse, it's an achievement. So if you reshape people, places, things, factions in a noticeable way. Uh, I don't know, you got one guy fired. Fired. It doesn't seem particularly terminal. You didn't take over the place and shoot a bunch of people or something. Drive. Did you pursue your drive? I don't think so. Uh, we talked to Audi. We talked about changing your drive last week because you weren't pursuing curiosity as much. But I was doing. I changed it to curiosity. From... Yeah, you can change it. You changed it like okay. a couple of weeks ago. But right now you weren't really chasing it. Okay. Particularly. Uh, okay. Was change. there one you liked better? Uh... And if none of them fit, but you have a great idea, tell me and I'll add it to the list. Okay, let me look here. I need to change mine depending mm. on what the mission is. If we're gonna be if we're gonna be flying, I'm gonna be piloting. Then I'm excited. That's very apocalypse world based. Yeah, so pretty much you can kind of do that, but not if you get it last session. So basically, if you don't get it this session for what you did last session, then you can change it. Yeah, no, that's fine. I so, did you do take a risk for excitement? There are new deep. No, no, no. I don't. I don't. Need the and Zatol, did you take one for curiosity? Uh, last session. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I, I, I'm not going to change it though. So. Okay. So if you did, you get to take charge. If not, uh, you do not. So. Uh, did you resolve a social bond with someone? No, not really. You haven't like cut anybody off in any way. Victory, did you complete a term? Let's look at the terms. Boom, contract. You did. You did Una and yeah, so you get one point for that. So everybody put one charge on either yourselves or the ship. I'm putting mine on the ship. Can't and follow. did you breach the contract? Nope, you didn't breach any of your terms. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, 
Okay. Charge now, Captain. That's full. Nice. So Adi is maxing out his charge. Yeah. I'm gonna change my drive to Justice. Like R Judge Dread. Really? Okay. That's gonna be entertaining. No. <laughs> I, I think you fit bloodthirsty slightly more than justice, but I, mean, I was kind of thinking that too, actually. But I was like, no, that's too on the nose. But you uh, wanted to be on the nose, and so you gained points. <laughs> freaking a! All right, I'll do bloodthirsty then, because that's yeah. what I wanted to do. Because <laughs> justice means it has to be justice, so you have to paladin that shit. Boring. Okay, so it means you gotta take risks to murder, kill, or hurt people, and that sort of thing. Yeah, okay. Okay. So, finally, training. So, this week, you are heading off to check out the explosion, so you're probably gonna be doing an investigation there, and then probably try, trying to track down this final location. So, you can change one of your training dice to any other thing that's untrained. So, Adi, you could put something into biosciences from perception or from fitness, or you could put into geosciences from politic. Mm -hmm. Likewise, you can do one uh, specialty within your within mm -hmm. one of the departments. So you could, say, take out of Ledger Domain and put into Martial Arts or Architecture or mm -hmm. uh, Survey. Or take I... out of Archaic Vehicle and put it uh... into Mining. I don't know, whatever you want. Yeah. I'm going to take out of Archaic Technology. Oh, yeah. This is what you wanted to do last week, right? Yeah. And put it into what? Um, I'm kind of thinking... Shield mechanics... Either... Uh, Wave weaponry will make you quite the shooty guy. I mean, shield mechanics is just for the ship, though, isn't it? Or is it nope. for your That's your, your own? personal shields. So... Sometimes you can't dodge things, so shields have become really important when you're standing in the void or in yeah. fire that you can't dodge because, you know, it's a star or something. Right. Okay. I'll do that. Can you take my uh, archaic technology off? Uh, I mean, sorry, vehicle? Archaic vehicle. That's what it was. You can't move from vehicle to shield mechanics. You Whatever. It has to be within the department. Okay. <laughs> so which one did you want to take out? Uh, technology to yeah, shield mechanics, yeah. All right. Attributes, abilities. Uh, we're talking mechanics. Okay, technology. Uh, I love this. I really have to fix this. But it's a lot of work. Mechanics, material science. Where's the other one? Ah, there it is. Okay, mechanics. Mechatronics. Mechanics. I don't know what. Oh, there it is. I don't know what order it's supposed to be. There you go. Got it. Thank you. It's just freaking random. Yeah, I noticed that. Yeah, it's all over the place. Jump, jumps around. It's like I think it's based on the order that you do them in originally. It they establish that. Oh. Okay. But there, I couldn't find any way of like initializing every single thing at zero mm. so okay cool so um that's interesting <laughs> ryan you're very low on your camera so you're like the only person you're kind of i put new tags on it so you're kind of hiding behind your name now <laughs> Okay, I can see your beautiful mm -hmm. face. Okay, cool. So, when we last left off, you guys were uh, leaving uh, Una. Was there anything you wanted to do before heading off to Finvar? Oh, 
Is anybody Stop. injured? Oh. I don't see any injuries. I think we, we fixed those all up last time and then did the investigation. Yeah, and you didn't manage to get injured in That's the right. investigation. Says the quiet man. Is it still quiet? Yeah, you're always yeah, quiet. I do not know what is wrong with this. I no, think we should Overwatch. Nobody complains. Maybe they don't <laughs> care. Probably. Maybe we need to do a trip to NTAX gate, Mike. <laughs> they had a business. Okay. Cool. Okay. Um, the, the only thing I can think of that we might want to mess with is we the item that um, he sent them signal to. Oh yes, the comms so, unit. So the comms unit. Like maybe we want to investigate it or something. Right. Yeah. Okay. So you are flying to the nearby planet. Uh, that probably takes like an hour, maybe two at the most. So during that time, someone to totally do that. So where's the device? What sheets it on? I think I have it, don't I? Didn't I get it? Or is it on the ship? Yeah, I'm, tr I'm looking for it. I thought we had written it down, but I'm not seeing it. Sample of alien language from the underwater research facility. You have that. Takuira's encrypted and locked ship research notes. I don't think that matters good. anymore. No. Um, because I think you gained access to that unencrypted version afterwards. Okay, we can delete that. Okay. You just press modify and hit delete. Okay, so... Who sheet would it be on? Marquita Rear Uniform, Aqua Facility Lab Gear. Okay, so you guys had a comms unit, but nobody seems to have written it down. Okay. I have Marquita Rear Uniform, which I put on right now. And just like walk around in it? No, <laughs> yeah. It's really tight in the Gotta go to the bathroom. Like the pants Ooh. are like super hugging. Oh, what does that say about them? I don't know. I'm trying to get in their head. What they, what, you know, how they think, how they, what is their uh, modem operandi? Yeah, it's very exciting wearing another man's pants. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> they, they use them to smuggle okay. budgies. Do you want <laughs> me to add this to your cargo list? Let's do that. So, what, whose was this? This was. Okay. Tarians. Um, there. And it doesn't weigh anything. What is this? Okay. At least not tons. So you guys have that. Uh, yeah, you can totally research that thing. Um... The main thing that that was going to do, and you already learned this, is once you get within range of the facility, it will give you a way that you can kind of, you know how you're trying to hack into a secure s facility? Well, that's kind of like, imagine hacking into, you're in a building with an advanced security system, but you're trying to hack in with a, I don't know, a computer terminal. So you're just trying to like connect via like a random cable or something. Like It's really hard to do, right? So. Uh, that's how in general it is but if you have someone who's linked in which this thing supposedly is that was the main use for that so once you get into a certain thing you'll be able to use it to like open doors or like hack into the main system or whatever but you'll have to hack this before you can hack that so it's kind of like a two stage thing the double hack double oh. hack shit it should be pretty easy though because it's only occupied by... Don't underestimate me. Yeah. I will fail both of those. I'm sure you will. <laughs> cool. Okay, so... we. Uh, do you want to just wait until you're within range to deal with this thing, or do you want to try to hack into it right now? No, I'll try to hack and it right now. It's a toll. Yeah, we could try to get the initial... Okay, cool. ...job done. Let's do this well, shit. Well, we're, you know... We got some time while we're flying over there. Okay. I play space chess with... So we, we see the ship 
take off from this like icy dwarf of Una over top of the large uh, ship facility, and it's just icy white as you break in, break the atmosphere, and you head across the dark towards a little dot which is slowly growing larger. And meanwhile, you guys are in on board your ship in the uh, in your uh, toilet you zero point lab. What is it called again? I've changed his name 15 times. In your grav lab. Excellent. So you do have a data core there that you can use to aid you and gain two extra dice. Hmm. That's awesome. So you spend one supply and you gain two dice to do packing stuff with or whatever kind of that sort of technology based things. So you walk into the thing, you walk into the facility, and this it. This is like a, a large room with um, huge piece of like hyper diamond, like coming out of the corner. It's part of the reactor uh, of the rest of the ship, I think. And um, there's a pedestal and some chairs, and in the pedestal, uh, there's like kind of a large table like the size of a desk but round and there's like pretty much holographic things floating around and Dell appears as soon as you walk in and this is kind of Dell's home mm. uh, especially because you have a data core uh, and this is where Dell can really help you out so you're, you're basically spending supply you're uh, using like a small piece of hyper diamond to uh loop into the device and basically create like a short term aid like you're looping it in so that you can use like the power of whole lab to aid you in your task you can still use your your thing your uh you're still using your link and everything as usual so you're still using your computer but this is like a coprocessor kind of thing that's helping you out this is this is when you're like, why doesn't Dell help us out? And I'm like, it's the OS. It helps you with everything. Well, this is him giving you extra help because you're basically tying in a bunch. You're basically adding extra processing power hmm. and resources to your task. Right. So we're we're like synthesizing little adapters to like attach to the device and yeah, That's all that kind of stuff. So you're like physically interfacing with it like a person would. So maybe there's some biomaterials that's like simulating the person's ear to try to give you a, a better chance of emulating the fact that that person's there. Because what you're trying to do is hack this device, right? So in this case, it's no. like that. In other cases, it could be different things. Don't we have an actual... Okay, and what, what did you say it costs to, to use this? It costs Cause... one supply to use this. Okay, no one's marked that? No one has marked that okay. that I know. I will, I will mark that now. Okay, so we're moving down from 16 to 15 supply. There we go. Cool. You guys are getting low on stuff. Okay. So let's pull open your character sheet too. Need so. To and buy more stuff. We're almost done with our contract now. This is. I'm gonna give you. This is basically gonna be an initial. Just a setup. Single action. It's not really an investigation. Uh, you'll get a little bit of data, but it's basically going to make it easier for you once you land in places and maybe give you a little info, depending on what you roll. Okay, so you get two dice from that, plus you're using your uh, hack. So when you get, so if you click that, you're gonna get four dice, and then if you want to spend a charge, you can also use your development kit. So you got a fucking bucket of dice. That's what you got here. Yeah, I'll spend a charge though. You didn't have to. I was just saying you could. Yeah, I'm going to. Okay, cool. And we're doing, uh, let's look at this. So this is actually a little bit difficult. So it's a very technical Okay. This is five difficulty because it's not particularly encrypted, but it is a secure device. Wow, barely. Holy crap, 8v5, and we get one hit. Look at those ones. Hey, we got lots of sixes and stuff on the other side. 
You just failed to succeed. You didn't deal with much danger. Okay. So you're sitting there, and uh, Dell's giving you advice on where to hook things up. And uh, when you're when you you got a piece of uh, biomaterial that simulates a person's ear because it's like a, one of, it's actually a neck mounted thing. So you've got it connected to this, and it's a uh, it was enough material on here that you kind of clone this little piece of like flesh to put it on, and then you've got this extra piece of um, this extra chip of hyperdiamond you've got on there and you're holographically connected to it and everything you see all this stuff on it and when you when you put the skin on it and you start to try to initiate it uh you see Dell grows really big like he's usually small because it gets in the way otherwise but he goes really big but you lose the rest of his body disappears and his face turns into Katarn for a second and he looks like he's wearing the device as you're attempting to simulate the person it's your AI that's simulating him. And you crack it open. So you now have access to it. So uh, you know from this uh, that there were comms messages. You know exactly when they were. They, they match all the records that you already have. Uh, you have general... Like, you have the messages. They're mostly... They're pretty straightforward. They're just like, uh, come at this time... Or this time's better, and um, we'll be arriving at this time. You get from the other side, and there's like no ID at all. It's just like a red dot, and um, pretty much there's some like sending numbers of, that seem to line up to the your, the shuttle records that you've already analyzed. Although you did, I think it. I don't think you did that great at that. Did you fail on that one, or was that the one you did succeed on? Anyways, so um, it lines up to a lot of the info you have, but you have access to the device. You know if you wear the device, it will think you're Qatar, Qatarian for a period of time. Like, it should open doors and do all the stuff like if he walked into the location. But you don't really know much more than that. And uh, you basically confirmed a bunch of things, and uh, you gain one name. Uh, you get what name called Lacroix. 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 Um, he at one point gets kind of this slightly grim. Uh, kind of gets told to shut up and do his job by someone named Lacroix. So, so, how can we research that? Is that name significant in, like, uh, do you have any kind of, like, uh... I don't know. You could try to research just Slater on the internet, too, but it might, it's the sort of thing is, yeah. it's a name. So, but if, if, that, but if, if you look up the, it, yeah, you don't have a lot of information. Okay. But you can if you want. That would be a research test. Yeah. Very good at that. And it would be difficult because you have so little information. Yeah. But you could cross-reference with, like, Marquis de Rue and that sort of thing. But somehow we could use that to our advantage because we know his name, so... Maybe he's the boss, he's the boss dude, so... If someone's maybe. given us given us guff about entering somewhere, we could be like, Look who was mad, you just need to let us in, or, you know what I mean? Something like that. You could. Are you going to research the name, or...? If you fail, they'll yeah. probably know that you're researching them, uh, I think. Would be a good. I'm not gonna and do if it. you succeed, uh, you might narrow it down to some a group of people that might be them. Okay. Because all you have is a name. Oh, we don't know if it's Marquis de Rue yet? We don't know any. You suspect it's Marquis de Rue. It was the person, yeah. the red dot. Yeah. Yeah. He said something, La Croix to this person and this person contacted them back. I'm going to say it, it sounds pretty French, so... <laughs> yes. I mean, the other person that you actually have a name of that uh, you've lost contact or was uh, that you've dealt with... Jean-Claude? Was... Where the hell is this sheet? Marlon? 
Man. Who's she talking for? Remember that was the person who was uh you learned about on the base? Mm. You heard her name. You heard a name of Marlin wants you to do this and that sort of thing. So there's basically two Marquis yeah. de Rue that you haven't murdered, whose names you have, and you haven't arrested or put in a cryo. Okay. But you know them just as Lacroix and Marlin. Mm -hmm. That's it. Cool, cool. Okay, so. So everybody flies along. You guys are flying along. You spend some time doing stuff. Does anybody else do anything while he's in the uh, core um, playing with comm units? Adi? Um, let's see, how's my uh, EVA suit doing? That oh, looks good. I don't know. I don't, I don't... Well, you're going to have time to do that when you disembark. Right, before we disembark. Um, or any kind of research. I'm not going to research anything. Um, I guess not. Okay. And finally, New Deep, you're flying, but you can do other things at the same time. It's pretty, I mean, it's it's a bit of orbital mechanics. It could be dangerous, but it's only a planet. It's just a hop. Put it in autopilot. Yeah, you basically fly past Aeom, which is a Cthulian, uh, towards a, silico a silicate planet. A little bit like home, but a lot, a lot lighter. Cthulhu lives there? Oh, a Cthulian planet is a planet which is used to be the interior of like an ocean or a oh, okay. gas planet or giant or something, and all that's left is the core. Yeah. So all the atmosphere or hydrosophy is, is blown off of it by an exploding star mm. or whatever, and then there's just this, like this super, which could be their uh, stone, so it's this mm -hmm. little tiny rock. Which is super hyper dense. It's like a dead planet. It couldn't, super couldn't become dead. a star. It like failed. As oh no! It, it it blew off all its gas. So you'd have a giant, right? Like Jupiter. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. imagine a big uh, solar wind or exploding star right. or something came and knocked the atmosphere off it. Cool. And the atmosphere maybe hit on a planet and became Earth's atmosphere or something like that. It can, all sorts of things can happen to that gas. Or mm -hmm. water, if it's an ocean planet. All that's left is some hyper-compressed uh, gas or liquid or a really hard piece of rock. Mm -hmm. okay. They're quite small. Uh, but they're cool. quite dense, too. So they're like a little dense little donut. Anyways, I didn't hear what you said, Slater. Sorry. Uh, I was just asking uh, if there's a way that I can shave some time off of our travel time. I know it's a short distance anyway, but is there a way I can... I, I mean, you can try to vector in tighter and stuff, but it's pretty short. You're just popping between two... It's like Earth to Mars kind of thing. Like, back in the old days, if you were flying at super low speeds before ion drives even, you would take, like, months, but... And this is taking, like, an hour... Right. Pretty fast. Like right. two hours or something, depending on the size of the system. But yeah. So it takes you a full day to go basically from the core to the rim in most systems. So. Yeah, so, I guess I'll just run, I'll maybe run some diagnostics on the ship while we're uh, Okay, cool. You're running the diagnostics, yeah, double checking all your things. Um, the rear being all patched up is slightly unfortunate. Uh, you really gotta get to a dry dock and fix that properly. Yeah. Um, you see the planet coming up quickly. You're vectoring in along the gravity well and zooming around it. So what you have before you is a uh, is Finvar. It's a silicate planet, class four, eight thousand kilometers wide. It's a forty degree axial tilt. I fixed my axial tilt stuff, by the way. And uh, it has a nitrogen ammonia uh, atmosphere with helium gas as the inert gas and an ammonia hydroxide hydrosphere. So, great for ammonia breathers. Yay! 
yeah, if we yeah. have any. But <laughs> it would be good for you if you did. Okay, so you can see that planet on the world log right here. If you wish. So you come into orbit around it. Uh, the planet has a uh, above Finvar City is a uh, is a space elevator called the Finvar Lift, and um, it's it's quite a large lift because the uh, surface gravity is quite low. It's 0.67 g's, so. Low surface gravity world, probably because it's only a class four. Earth is a class six. Um, and uh, you're basically moving towards the uh, space elevator. So you standard thing would be to comms with them. Are you guys all on bridge by the time you get there? Or? Definitely. Okay. Yep. Who wishes? I mean, you could comms. You could have comms them at any time. But when do you do that? Do you fly by? You gotta buzz the tower. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> uh, if you get too close, they'll probably comms you. So if you just want them to comms you, you can. I'm just I giving don't you a chance comms. To... I'm terrible at comms. Yeah, I mean, I, f I feel like we contact them. We don't want to do it too early, right? So we don't, we don't want them like preparing specifically for us, but. Uh, just just early enough so that like you know they're ready as we arrive. So I'm gonna start calling that standard procedure because I ask this question every time we've done this, and you guys have come up with the same answer of just before we arrive, not too early, but not like once we're already in orbit. So they're like, hey, who the fuck are you? Why haven't you contacted us yet? And start mm -hmm. scanning and checking you out. Maybe we should do that. Okay, right. so you're moving with standard procedure. Which is to calm them like 30 minutes before, like uh, 10 minutes before you're pretty much going to be docking. Okay, so you get uh, a message um, when you calms uh, from Finvar Lift. Uh, it's super formal, it's basically asking for your information, what you want, pretty much. Just like you know, copy paste. Six stuff. part like form it's a standard xmi form xmi runs the lift and um there's a much. you can click on it to basically contact if you actually want to talk to the person and there's no like hey we're here to investigate you choice in the pull downs it's a <laughs> uh wish to move here for dropping off uh materials on our way to Finvar City for tourism, going out on probably contact him. All sorts of things. So, and it's yeah. signed by a. Uh, let me give you a name, Officer Laurel Chan. Sorry, I interrupted someone. I think it's Laurel Chan. Yeah, Officer Laurel Chan. It's a toll. Yeah. Should probably talk to him. Tell yeah, him yeah. If, if if our our answers aren't going to fit this form, then yeah, I'll go. Oh yeah, your him. answers are kind of beyond this. It's like uh, they sent you basically the standard like message. Um, there's a click for XMI employees or XMI uh, vessels, and one for uh, more information required. Um, you click through the XMI. Yep. Yeah. So you get a contact right back. Um, pops up in your view. Uh, you see a, uh, a slender woman who looks like she's kind of almost standing in attention while she speaks to you. And she looks at you and goes, I see your ID. The FSR. Oh, FSR is suspicious. What, what, do we, what can we do for you today, gentlemen? Captain uh, Toll, is it? Yes, we've been tasked with uh, investigating the various uh, terrorist attacks. Oh, I see. Okay. Uh, checking. Yes. Okay, I see that. 
You have no official, but you already have. Okay, they're saying co-op. Okay, great. Um, here's your coordinates. She sends you stuff. We've uh, uh, locked down the area where the attack happened, um, and pretty much everything's ready for you. Um, is there anything I can do with do for you, or are you uh, ready to dock? No, I mean I I know uh, these attacks are fairly recent. If any any reports, uh, of course, everything will be there for you. Come on in. Excellent. Thank you. And she clicks you off. Okay, so we see uh, landing information kind of come through, and you got basically all the holograms and stuff. We zoom in on New Deeb's eyes as you get all the holograms for the landing position, and um, so pretty much uh, uh, the elevator is a big ring, and um, inside that ring is a basically a ring station that moves up and down the outer ring is out at the front and they have docking stations but you've been requested to dock at the internal station and it is actually on its way up right now it's almost to the top so uh you're we see the ship kind of fly in and then you move into a holding pattern for about 10 minutes and then the station stops and a bunch of stuff starts happening. You see locking down and think uh, some small vessels moving about and then you get the signal for, for go. And the station is ready for your landing. They have the parade ready. Yeah, perhaps. perhaps. The confetti. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you move down and uh, it's a uh, they, they want you to dock at uh, one that just goes directly in your ready room. It's a personal dock port. Um, when you dock, uh, a large arm kind of comes in and secures your vessel and uh, like a, a hard lock uh, because you're on the elevator. So you're just connected here and one kind of coming in underneath the vessel and one kind of coming in over the top. And uh, you have docked and you're now aboard. Um, pretty much in the time it would take uh, a standard um, system to uh, a standard airlock to cycle, there is three sharp wraps at your at your outer uh, airlock door. Oh, who knows? Who is it? <laughs> so, what are you guys doing? Are you guys at this time? Are you in the ready room and stuff, ready to go out? Uh, how are you dressing? And uh, are you heading out or not? We deep dresses how we always dresses. Over dresses. Okay. <laughs> Space Marine style. Audi. I yeah I, yep pretty much the same. Okay. Remember, if you're in full EVA, you're not as good at like talking to people and stuff. That's I'm not good. I'm a captain. I'm not good at that. Yeah. Boss. So I'm. I'm. I will just be in the ship suit, I guess. Okay. So if you guys want to put any, remember to spend supply. You can put anything on your ship on your suits that you require. Um. If you think you're going to be in combat and or such. If you're cruising for a bruising. Okay. Uh, cool, cool, cool. Got everything okay, right. so um, you'll get up. The Marines clunking in behind you. And they in the <laughs> basically full on spacesuits, and you walk down the hall, you open the door, and um, the, the quick rapping you heard was from the other side of the airlock. Um, and so you walk down through the the connecting part and uh, doors open um, and she's pretty much waiting there for you. The outer door opens pretty much as you arrive and you see a woman standing there in an XMI uniform, perfectly pressed. Mm. So it's like a one piece or it's a two piece suit, gray boots, um, some symbology on it. Uh, 
a corporate. It's got a tie shirt underneath the shirt. She's looking there and she's like, "What's her hair like? It What's is... she smelling?" Just kidding. <laughs> her hair is up. Yes. And she that smells like super neutral cleaner. <laughs> Like someone who yeah. uses unscented hand, uh, <laughs> desanitizing hand cream a lot, or hand cleanser a lot. I bet her underwear is regulation. You do not know that. You'll have to get <laughs> to know her a lot better than this. I bet okay. it's X in my regulation. <laughs> it might be. Anyways, <laughs> enough of that BS. What do you guys do? <laughs> she stands there, she looks at you and goes... She, she looks at each of you. She sees you guys in, like, outfits. Has the look of, oh, it's fucking free spacers. Oh, God. Uh, but very formal. And then looks at you, Zatoll, and goes and, and says to you, um, okay, I can take you to the uh, site of the uh, attack, if you wish, or um, somewhere else first. Uh, no, let's get right to it. We can go ahead and uh, excellent. look at the site. She spins you a map of the facility. Um, you all you all receive this. Um, it pretty much blocks out the area, and uh, the attack is pinged on it. And you see that it is in a, uh, a cargo pod on the lower level. Um, kind of in the mid... And uh, doesn't list any. It actually lists like current conditions and stuff. And there was very little damage. Pretty much a cargo container blew up. Like something in a cargo container blew up, and that's what happened. Gotcha. So she takes you down. You you walk down the hallway. Uh, you see a, a few people when they walk past her. They they stand up straight. Uh, they don't salute or something. It's not military, but they stand up straight and they nod to her, and uh, they move past. You move down a hallway through a couple like general kind of work areas, um, where uh, people are are conversing and then heading off to other elevators. And you find yourself in the, kind of like a master elevator room. You're pretty sure, according according to the map, you're at the center of the uh, well, not exact center. Exact center is a giant carbon fiber cable that connects to the planet uh you're around that and there's these small elevators that go up and there's uh eight of them it's like a little hexagon or octagon around the uh around the large cable the cable's man huge but not as big and ridiculous as some planets because it's a low gravity planet so um she takes you an elevator you pop down the elevator uh, it zips down and there's really nothing to see. Uh, there's elevator music <laughs> that plays. It's some ancient song you probably never heard of about a girl of some sort. Anyways. <laughs> and uh, after a couple minutes you find yourself uh, a little hologram pops up and it says uh, secure storage uh, uh, f secure storage hold A16 and uh, security lockdown underway and then a pause welcome Laurel Chan officer third class commander lift and then the doors open and you find yourself in a warehouse, pretty much. So on each side are these mat are the same kind of cargo containers that you're used to, the standard cargo containers that carry uh, 100 tons of cargo, look like they're made out of some weird version of plastic, and uh, they're stacked up. And they look like they were stacked up perfectly before, before the explosion, and so there is a broken in half one in the middle in in, in the uh, on the right hand corner halfway through and um, a bunch of cargo containers are kind of thrown back away from 
where the explosion obviously happened and they're all damaged and stuff and uh there's like holographic uh secure like signage all around it basically super far back like she took standard like csi procedure and took the the standard procedure for like extreme situations so it's like full pull back really far if it was just like a murder or somebody something or somebody shot it it might be a lot closer but it's super far back she basically stops at the line like precisely turns around military precision and looks at you what do you do uh ask her Russ, what have, what do you know so far what have you found out uh we've avoided uh, disturbing the uh, scene as much as possible and uh continued operation as usual uh we were late uh, 23 minutes for our first uh, lift and improved efficiency we uh, managed to get back on schedule within two lifts except, except for the cargo in here yes this has been locked down um, message has been sent to all of the owners of the cargo uh, away from the positions and uh, are away from the situation and uh those are all been locked down as well so nothing in this room has been touched um and i am dealing with uh through with uh, customer service to each of the owners of these other cargo pods so i'm glad you're here so we can finish up the situation and figure out what's going on any any of those owners uh particularly uh upset about the delay yes there is a um Mr. Uh, Carl, Carl Sabin, who is very, very angry that his uh, green vine juice won't be ready for export. Uh, I would be too. Otherwise, it has just been the normal back and forth. But yeah, he is quite angry. He is a long-term customer, though. He's always been an asshole. <laughs> he he often asks for discounts, and I tell him it's against XMI policy, but he still asks <laughs> again, repeatedly. <laughs> what are you getting from. at, Zatol? <laughs> All right. Doesn't seem particularly suspicious. Um, doesn't seem like they accomplished much with this attack. I wonder what their it's not my job to analyze terrorist actions, but um, it seems to be yours, so I'll let you to it. Uh, do you need anything from me? Okay. Can we get the uh, the full inventory of uh, what was going to be in here? And uh, Of course. Uh, you get flipped a large file full of inventory, another file full of security footage, uh, including the elevator drop and uh, the delivery thing for the two weeks around this period. Nice. Two weeks before so, and everything since then, pretty much. So, not uh, weeks on this side, I guess. so uh, what kind of scans do these uh, cargo containers go through? How hard would it be to just send like a normal shipment, uh, something explosive like this? Well, we do have scanners, of course. We scan them as they go through, looking for various things. Um, a lot depends on what is listed on the cargo manifest. I mean, people do ship all sorts of different biosamples and mostly biological entities from Finyar. Um, uh, you understand that uh, there is a particular type, a couple different types of biomaterials off of Finvar that are valuable for usage. Um, that makes it difficult to scan for explosives, as most of them are bio-based. And, um, yes, we, we do general scans, I mean, calm traces, that sort of thing. Um, I... We did not detect anything in particular here, or it would not have been placed in the secure facility. I mean, how big of an explosion does it like happen? Is it huge, or just kind of? It wasn't huge. No, it didn't take right. out like the walls. It wasn't like a yeah. reactor. Yeah, it sounds like the only thing damaged were 
the nearby cargo containers. Oh yes, and most of those don't seem to have been damaged too much on the inside, but of course we haven't looked. We can just see that nothing spilt. Can I can I also ask what what would it take to, you know, really damage the elevator, the facility and everything? Would it, it seems like it would have to be significant. Well, this location is close enough to the cable, and that would be dangerous. Um, it didn't happen at an opportune time. It happened quite close to the top. You would want right. to do it near the bottom. Right. Uh, it would be yeah. a very dangerous thing to do. Uh, if you mm -hmm. did it really high up towards the top, you could cause the top to loosen, and if there was enough impact, it would be quite the explosion would be required. Mm -hmm. And we do have several uh, contingency plans in motion to ensure that, uh, as you say, Waggle does not damage the planet. Hmm. Waggle? Yes, a, a carbon fiber um, cable, mm -hmm. with or without the station or elevator, would cause a great deal of damage to the planet if it came back oh, and hit it at Anywhere yeah. near terminal velocity. <laughs> yeah, I could see that. Okay. It would be massively dangerous. But we have several contingencies mm. for it and backups and such, including <sighs> shuttles that can uh, dock with and tow it. It seems really? like a difficult and dangerous uh, hmm. prospect. Yeah. How how far? Okay. How how long is the elevator? It's quite long. Uh, the planet is 8,000 kilometers in diameter because it's a planet. Mm -hmm. um, it's probably about 1,500 kilometers. The so, elevator. Yeah, kilometer okay. and a half. I mean, it's, it's a little smaller. It's, it's smaller than Earth, but... Mm -hmm. there, there are significant uh, uh, settlements on the planet, I assume. Yes. As you can see on the, the sheet, uh, there are three settlements that you already know of. There's mm -hmm. Finvar City, which is their largest city, which is in a kind of a lake district area. Yeah. Um, in the plains, one of the main areas of agricultural production, there's a place called Otahold. And mm -hmm. on a large, and when it says island, it means like Australia. There yeah. is a place called Lervik Hold, but it is a... It is kind of like a jungle filled with lots and lots of animals. Like, people don't leave the city. There's so many animals and stuff in the woods. And there's a lot of... Um, in both areas, there's a ooze-like plant mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that instead of, like, trees and grass and stuff, there's kind of this ooze. Mm. Um, it kind of... Mm, it kind of sits up in a kind of a position, almost like trees and stuff doing kind of plant-like things, except it's closer to a news. Cool. Are, are these are all of these cities in the fall zone, or would would be in the fall zone? Oh, depending on the direction it went, uh, probably could hit almost any of them. Um, okay. But okay. you would definitely hit Finvar City. Obviously, it is the largest. Uh, you, might hit auto hold. I haven't calculated those particularly. I'll add it to my test list for um, four weeks from now. Mm -hmm. You see, she's obviously adding it to her calendar. Yeah. Okay. Is there anything else, or are you going to investigate, or? We I'm going to um, investigate. And anyone who would have been loading cargo in or out of uh, here. Um, oh yes. Um, any other personnel who would have been directly in contact uh, with this cargo, um, we we may want to interview at some point. So yes, I have the full staff um, is sitting in interview room three. And she sends you a position. It is actually a uh, like an HR kind of room. Mm -hmm. Just kind of off. It, it's, it converts between a lunchroom and this, like it changes purposes when required. It's a, technically a multi-purpose room, but it's been configured as an interview room currently. So you see it pop up and it's underneath it, it says multi-purpose room, currently interview room, blah, blah, blah. And less a small section of staff. There's only three people that came in contact with it. Hmm. 
And they're, what about them? they're basically deck hands. Okay. So, um, do you guys want to take a break and then do the uh, in, do the uh, sure do the uh, investigation, or should we go through that and then take a break? It's eight, which it's almost eight, which is normal time for our break, but we did start late. So, it's up to you guys. What do you think? We do break now. It's fine. Yeah, I can't hear you, Slater, at all. So. Oh. Said I'm down either way. Okay. Well, we can do it right now if you guys want to start. Um. Whatever. Okay. Let's start the investigation. Let's the let's shots. do it. Then we'll we'll stop after the investigation. Okay. Cool. Do an analysis. I can take up my scanner. Okay. You put that scanner scan. away, you pervert. I can scan you, you filthy human. Oh. What do you <laughs> there? Oh, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> going off. That's nothing. <laughs> okay, so we're doing an investigation. Uh, because you guys want to know what went on. This is a pretty straightforward investigation. So, um, Or is it? I'm saying it's five milestones then. Uh, All right, we just need to fail five tasks. <laughs> if you fail five tasks, you will discover everything you need can to know. Can do, Captain. Can do. <laughs> That's a good positive. Okay, so as uh, Slater obviously realizes, the first station is usually sensor analyst, where you discover a bunch of stuff you can deal with. Uh, there's also researcher, medical examiner, interviewer, uh, engineer, which includes mechanics or any sort of analysis. That's me. Uh, programmer, if anything needs to be cracked. Astro navigator, full signatures or movement of vessels need to be part of it. And surveillance, if there's a bunch of people standing around doing things. The last two seem unlikely in this situation. So those are the mm -hmm. different types of stations. Uh, feel free to come up with other things if you can. What's and the threat like I'm scanning with, or analyzing my uh, scanner? So the difficulty of this particular problem, I, I'm saying it's a problem. It's three difficulty. Analysis is appropriate. And it would be survey because you're not actually analyzing individual things. You're not going and finding a scuff mark and trying to determine where it came from. You're right. looking for things. Then I'm, uh, I'm blowing a charge. And then you're using on your scanner, Sur you can use your survey sensor. sensor. Okay. Two. And then it's three. And you get a charge. You have five successes. Nice. Awesome. Nice. I get my charge back. So, you discover a lot of things. All the things. Okay, so. <laughs> Um, you can tell that one, you know where the explosive was, where they are, you find them. Um, it's a large crate and there's a bunch of explosives that still are, there's like, it was a crate of explosives. One explosive went off. The others didn't. Mm. Uh, mm -hmm. it is for, it was obviously being shipped and it totally when you scan it it's really obvious that it was also it's very similar to some of the other explosives that you've seen on this case already mm -hmm. it's a uh it's a biotech explosive like most explosives um it has a certain amount of uh it's got chips on it, so it can be contacted like a comms unit and set off. Um, what else do you find? You got three points on this. So uh, you can look at the, so the, the things you can investigate are the explosive itself. Um, you could, one of the things you do is you basically can tell a bunch of things aren't useful at all. Um, and you can tell this was not on purpose. The placement of this explosive was suboptimal in every way, even 
some dude who plays like the ancient sport of role playing would never have placed an explosive in this location. Um, <laughs> it right. was being carried. Someone was smuggling it, and it went off. Whoopsie. And like maybe to do a scan, um, you yeah, don't know because you didn't look for that sort of thing. So pieces but, of him are all over the place. You you basically have a fully recreated positioning. They're all just sitting there. Things are loaded in. Um, you see this the standard scuffage, super obvious scene. Um, yeah, that's pretty much what you discover. So uh, I'm thinking this is actually a larger. It might be a, a bigger investigation than I thought because I forgot there was more than that sort of thing. So I'm going to make it a to seven. But mostly because um, it's more than just this one scene. I kind of forgot you had footage and you could go out and deal with these interviewers too. And there's a couple more clues that I kind of forgot about. So anyways, there we go. So uh, the places that you can definitely determine are uh there was one person who brought it in you have like evidence of them when you recreated the crime coming in and out um one person there um so is that person uh you suspect that if she followed standard procedure which she seems to she would it'd be another like the other two people so she brought you probably the right number there's nobody else in the room um like, nobody was hurt. There was nothing else hidden. Uh, this was a storage went off. Hmm. Um, you might find out more from uh, surveillance footage, the people involved, and uh, any of the cargo information. But there's a... He basically... He's managed to get rid of, like, any red herrings. There's just, there's just no, like... No real need to look at these other boxes. They have nothing to do with it. It's very obvious by the scans. Okay, what's next? Uh, is there any danger of it exploding? No, it's all super inert. It shouldn't have happened. Uh, it's likely that the person, whoever packed the box, um, kind of let a one of the pieces of hyperdiamond kind of drop down in between. And then they touched the corner, and it, and then that got a signal and it exploded. Mm. Amateur. It was, yeah, it was, it was somebody made a mistake in packing a box. Mm. Um, pretty much like, like a piece of foam used to be there. That's what he managed to reconstruct. And on the top there, there was a container with that. And then the container wasn't locked perfectly. Like the lock was busted or something. And then it... They left a little bit of extra space on the top. They, they actually put a light kind of foam material in there, but it didn't take the compression of change of the gravity change. And then mm. the lid opened. Like mm. he can totally reconstruct those kind of things. And the uh, a chip must have fallen out and then slid down the side and hit one of the bio explosives and then a signal happened and then Whoopsie. Okay. Like it was just a series of little mistakes caused this. So no, can you can you could you analyze how much unexploded material there is and what kind of damage that would have done if it would have, if it would have exploded in the right spot that it, it would, could it have taken this thing down? Uh, you can look at that and I'll just give you. It, there's no way this was meant to try to take down this thing. It would yeah. require the, the elevator. The elevator is not the target. It would have been. So, was this being shipped down to the planet? This would be hard to do with your ship. I know it was being okay. shipped out of the, off the planet. Okay. So this is where the explosives they used in all their attacks was being manufactured, maybe. Maybe. And then we've found some of it, some of their supply chain. Uh, Shut up, Captain. That's not right. No, I'm just kidding. That's probably right. <laughs> okay, so who wants to roll what now? Well, what sort of task would be good for this? So you have a research material, so a researcher can totally do their jazz. Um, you can go interview people. Um, and then 
a couple different engineering things so you can do the analysis that you were talking about so you can do like a metal you can do a bioanalysis with biosciences of the explosives themselves you can do uh, engineering of or uh, like a interface or yeah analysis of the uh, the zero point uh, uh, detonators that's the word I'm looking for uh, you can do a mechanical analysis of all of the materials but he, he's found a lot of that out with his initial scan I was gonna say I it didn't he? Ass. yeah because he, he, he he's myself. plotted all the mani all the positions that everything moved and where they came from reconstructed the scene like you got a holographic like version of this in location and you can see that it was packed in the middle and all that cool. sort of stuff, and you know exactly which number it was, and all that sort of thing. So, where did the crate originate from? That's the only one. There, that's a research task, probably. You have a lot of info. Someone else do it. <laughs> <laughs> that's the yeah, thing. None of us are good at that, I don't think. I got three research. Yeah, three's okay. Difficulty three. Do you have. Nobody's got Com Browser. Yeah. So Toll could browser. do this task, I think. Yeah, I have com browser. So if I'm if I'm spending charge on it, I'm yeah, not yeah. too terrible. Or you could have did you actually move a specialty around? Because I've noticed you had comms for a while and research. Uh I did move something I don't remember what. Okay. Just asking if yeah. you did that. Yeah. Yeah, maybe research would be better than com, so I'll have to keep that in mind. Okay, cool. So, uh, did you want to do the research, or did you want to go talk to people, or and make Audi do the research? It's up to you. Audi, do do some research. Do some research. Okay. You I'll might want to get some more skills in uh, research and stuff when we do some upgrading at the end of this uh, thing, if you guys yeah. can afford it. Yeah. Okay. Researching okay. is boring. Make the human do it. Yeah, there you go. I like research. So three v three from the sounds of it. Yep. Okay. Okay. Three. Um, yay. Okay. Huh. Okay, okay. Okay, so you, you're you digging through all these files. Um, there's a lot of files. She gave you everything. Mm. So it's just a ton of stuff. But it is, like, a ton of redaction as well. Like, she gave you everything, but she didn't want you to have any, like, too much personal information or anything from other times. Mm. Um so you, you dig through and you do find um, the that it was it was sh handed over it was shipped uh, directly from um, this facility on the ground facility. Mm -hmm. And as you're doing this, by the way, you hear chunk as the elevator starts to move down. Is that so, normal? Does anybody hear that? Is that normal? Yep, yeah, so the elevator's descending back towards the planet on its is schedule. Is it supposed to be on lockdown over here? This room is on lockdown. Oh, so just that's Your another... vessel and the elevator is now descending into the atmosphere. Is that normal, guys? We... It does this every couple hours, so... It's taking okay. you guys about an hour to do this. So as you're doing this, you're researching through this, and you hear the kachunk as as the systems wind up and everything gets ready to start leaving. Okay. Uh, there's an announcement that comes over, and uh, Officer Chan announces that it will be 20 minutes before leaving. Uh, for 20 minutes till descent. 20 minutes to descent. Mm. And... Uh, Yes, so on the information you find that they left, that it was delivered, it says hand-delivered and paid for by um, 
by hand or by uh, in cash by the local Too custom much. and at the station so at the uh the mm -hmm. finvar lift station it was dropped off and uh it was supposed to be picked up by a um a someone named martin martin just the one name martin the and martin. Uh, it, there's like a code exchange to prove identity. Hmm. I'll make note of it. Cross reference with the facility uh, roster, you know, kind of. Yeah, and, and part of this is also looking at all the videos. So you basically mm -hmm. watch and fast forward many hours of uh, people moving boxes in and out. It it's sounds really exciting. boring. <laughs> and uh, it seems all normal. Yeah, well, I got zero successes, so and, I can't believe I got that. Uh, you don't see a partic any particular delivery. Mm -hmm. um, I mean... Because he, he did it covertly. So. Yeah, it's like if they were delivering, they, they managed to... Like, the sensors were... They, they don't have picture personal video directly. So you don't actually see that. You just see people moving in and out, and you're not sure which box it is. It's actually, oh. there's just a lot of data that's hard to find. Probably so you don't get any video of anybody in particular. Right. I'm guessing he circumvented yeah. somehow the scanners. Well, you do get a picture of someone, mm -hmm. but uh, they are wearing a uh, uh, breathing mask, and they're dressed in black. Oh, okay. The, the planet does have periods of time of a uh, large spore release. Rose. So. Okay. The ooze breeds by spore. Uh-huh. But if there's only one guy, I mean... Yeah, you see someone bring in, a, like, basically bring in a box, uh, pay for it, and drop it off, and they're wearing their spore mask. And uh, just a normal box here, nothing to look at. Well, there's like five other people also wearing sport. That's one of the things that I'm like, you don't really okay. know which one it is, but you're yeah. pretty sure it's the third guy. But it's just a human with a spore mask on, okay? Okay, and they don't get like full biometric data and everything for every single person who ships something. No, not with zero success, anyways. There you go, that's what your zero success is tells you. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. I relay this to the captain in uh, New Deep, so they're on they're on level. You're on what level? That <laughs> you're on the same level as me. This is what I found. <laughs> Not much. Also, you're pretty My eyes sure. Are heavy. Ugh, you're pretty oh, sure please. you uh, you asked for extra information to about fifty of the people on your list. When you're going through them, you ping them all for extra information. I do? You did, yeah. Okay. You're not sure if you pinged that person in particular, but you pinged a ton of different people for information. It's like shotgun it out there and hopefully it, something comes back. I don't, You probably didn't mean to, but yeah, that's what <laughs> Okay. There was just the more info button and you didn't realize that like clicking it sent them a message, but it does. Good. Yeah. I mean, it's a it's a kind of standard system, but it's also the, the, the complex, right? I don't know if you've yeah. ever used customer service software, but... That's like when you hit the... Nobody touches the... On an airplane, nobody touches that button that brings the server. Like, nobody does that. Nobody. Not on purpose, that's, no. That's what I was pushing, probably. Like, Yeah. You were like, I'm going to turn on the light. Oh, crap. That's... No, that is pointing towards... It's not the best UX design. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> okay. Anyway. Well, it, it won't alert the terrorists, because you just did it to everyone, so they're just being treated like... Yeah, that's true. A normal customer. Make note of it, GM. <laughs> if they if they if they uh, check notes with any of the other customers, yeah. um, that's the first thing Terrace always do. Yeah. <laughs> Contact um, else on the email list. Yeah. Gosh, so like, I mean, we can interview the people who work in this warehouse, but if it was just being shipped as normal, they're not necessarily going to know anything. 
But I'll go ahead and question them and press them and see okay. if any of them look sweaty. <laughs> okay, so you walk in to interview room seven, I think it was. Anyways, and uh, there's a group of, of employees sitting there and smoothing their pants and such. Uh, there is a human woman named uh, Arlene. Uh, there is a uh, Septox named uh, W and a human man named uh, Frank. And they're all sitting there. Kind of what, what, what was the woman's name again? Arlene. That stinks of human. The very human name, yes. Mm hmm. So they're all kind of sitting there looking towards you as you walk in. Or pat in on your many tentacles. <laughs> what do you do? Um, what are you looking at? <laughs> I think I say, um, so any, any of you uh, ready to confess? <laughs> and then I just kind of, I kind of see how they react and then play it off like I was joking. They they like, all kind of give you the the big eyes like what the fuck what are you talking about? <laughs> you heard him. You know what? <laughs> are you talking back to my captain? Are you there as well, or no, you're no, going to no. be doing something else probably? Oh, I'm I'm probably doing something else. Now. Yeah. Um. I don't think you want your role to be on that ruse. But... No, that's that's just my, my opening. Um, yeah, so they all give you kind of like, oh, um, what? Kind hmm. of like. Uh, uh, <laughs> God, where do I go from here? Um, <laughs> Didn't think that. I don't know. It was a bit of an odd beginning to me. I don't know. <laughs> Um, I've got a few. I just wish I had more information to start off with. Um, we can go with uh, whatever new deep is probably going to do instead. But it's up to you. what what was what was the name um, that it was of the person who was supposed to receive the shipment? Martin. Just one word, Martin. You're welcome. And we, and we don't have any name for the person who shipped it? No. When it, it says shipper, it's like hand-delivered. That's what it says. Cash. Yeah. Uh, you can um, see who picked... It was Arlene who filed this in the station. <gasps> Yeah, anything. She works at the really. desk sometimes. So does uh, um, W. I would probably save Arlene for last then, and then I would, I would take them and try to question them one-on-one. -on -one. Okay, so the room is divided currently. It's kind of a reconfigurable room. Uh, and uh, so who are you taking into the interview part first? Frank. Okay, so you just you like okay, Frank, let's talk or something or yeah. Okay, so Frank gets up and fixes his tie, kind of follows you in. They're wearing like short sleeve <laughs> shirts, ties. And he comes in and he sits down. In, in this room, there's like a little like a uh, kind of like desk, with, like nothing on it, and a chair on each side. So what do you do? Show me the scene. Frank sits down and looks at you nervously. Yeah, I I really don't have enough information to really press them on anything, so I'm probably just you can ask them go, going through the basics. Yeah, asking questions. Um, so what are you asking? A, a lot of it's just kind of filler, and I'm just kind of trying to get a read on them. Um, okay. So it's how long have you worked here? Uh, Frank Frank looks here. Wow, 
I worked here for a lot of years now. I think 12? I, I was really hoping to... I mean, it's a pretty good job. If, if get good, good money to feed my family in the uh, end of our city, you understand. I mean, I usually work in the back. So, I don't have to talk to people. That's kind of nice. And uh, it's pretty easy. Just moving around boxes, going up and down, going up and down. <laughs> yeah. And uh, around the station, they, they, they like you. I can always get get a good deal on, on breakfast. And uh, it, it's, it's, it's like being a it's like being in transport industry, you know, because, uh, but you just have to go up and down, so it's, it's pretty easy. Because the, uh, the elevator does all the hard work for you, right? Well, no, it, lots of boxes move around, everything has to be locked down real tight, and wait, Chan, I mean, if you, you gotta do everything by the book, but she's got a book, a real good book, a lot of jobs to get there, they expect you to kind of figure it out yourself, you understand, but... Not this job. You just you got people's papers, do everything by the book, and you're good. Is that all you want to know? Um, I mean, I, 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 he, see, he, he doesn't seem too suspicious to me, so I probably don't spend too much time on, on Frank. Um, but like I said, I just got... I probably have... You know, a few different names, including, you know, Carl Sabin, you know, Carl Sabin, you know, and I want to. So you ask him for the name? So let's do that. Let's run the yeah, name Carl, Carl Sabin, a few other random customers off the list, and then Martin would be in He's the like, list. I don't know. I just uh, picked up books. Do you understand? Uh, Martin, I don't know. I, like I said, I, I usually pick up the boxes and move stuff around. I don't like dealing with the customers very much. I, I get it. Arlene tells me. We're, to go grab a box, I grab a box. Officer Chan tells me to grab a box, I, I, I grab a box. Uh, we get up to top, I unlock the boxes, and we unload them. I, I don't really do the front desk very often. That's, that's W and Arlene. I, are, are you here about the, ex, uh, the the explosion? That was pretty scary. Yeah, it's lucky nobody got hurt. But yeah. I, I could have easily been in there. I mean, if I didn't follow Officer Chan's rules about, I mean, there was this old employee who used to work here. The name was uh, Bob Devereaux. He used to sleep sometimes in some of the cargo bays on, on the rides up and down. He'd like to take an hour nap or whatever, but Officer Chan wouldn't have any of it and fired him. If I was like him, I'd be dead. So I'm pretty glad to follow the rules. XMI likes, likes uh, employees to follow the rules, and I think I'm um, moving up. And he kind of looks at you with a big grin. <laughs> I'm kind of expecting you to laugh. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. <laughs> yep, moving up. And then down, <laughs> and then up again. And you then got it, again. you got it. Oh, that always kills the parties. <laughs> Anyways, so that's what I do. Move up and down. Pick up boxes, carry them around, unload them, load them. Oh, that and wonderful. I, I think the only other questions I would have for him would be uh, about his two uh, fellow employees. What's he, what's he, uh, his opinion of them? Ah. Dougie is a fine fellow. Um, pretty friendly. Um, he, uh, she, I, I don't know whatever W is um uh they uh they they work in the back as much as they work in the front and uh yeah our, our I never had no problem with them Arlene she's a strong 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 woman you understand she, she likes to work out front she don't like to pick up boxes I mean I, I'm not sure how good she is, even with the lifters. I mean, they take a little skill, right? You gotta have good, 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 good control. I mean, you don't want to spin a box across the room or something. <laughs> but she, she doesn't really like doing it. Works out front most of the time. Does 
she have any other complaints about the job or otherwise? Oh, she, she can complain. She's always got something to complain about. Hmm. Yeah, like what kind of stuff? Oh, she's she's hoping to move up as well, but I I don't think she really wanted to just work on a station like this. She 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 came from uh, outside the sector and uh, really wanted to do something something else. I think she's talked about colonization and going out to the outer systems. But you know, it's they're taking a real long time to open out the outer outer systems. So down the road, yeah. I mean, we're we're pretty pretty new. We're kind of a colony already, but I mean, she's bored. I don't know. You can talk to her. I don't know. I hear her complaining sometimes, but you should talk to her. I don't, I don't know. Okay. Thanks, Frank. <laughs> if uh, if I have any other uh, questions for you, I'll be in touch. No problem. Can I uh, can I head out? Uh, yeah, for now. Awesome. Okay, great. So he leaves kind of waves at the other two and heads off to his descent break or something probably mm -hmm. uh, the vehicle is currently under descent take approximately an hour to arrive at the bottom Ooh, All right. who do you wish to speak to next let's go through the same thing with W okay so W comes on in and he's a septox like you or they are, I suppose. What? Yeah. They're currently a male. <laughs> and they look at you and they're like, so, what would you like to know? Uh, probably open the same way. The same. He's like, um, it's a good planet. I, I'm, as you try raising money, to open a, a ranch. There's these very large creatures on the planet. They eat the ooze out in the plains. You understand? Mm. Yes. Well, if you, if you can turn that ooze into something useful, that sounds like a uh worthwhile endeavor yes out by the lakes they do that but much more interesting is out in the plains out on Otto hold there's these cactuses and there's this species of animal that eats cactuses and then they absorb what they need from them and when they drop them out the material that you get is actually quite useful for a variety of biotech functions. It's a good investment, I think. I think I will move out to auto hold. I, I think in about a year I should have enough money. And if I apply for the XMI grant, I should be able to open a ranch and harvest the cacti gems. Cacti gems. That's what the locals call them. It's kind of a silly name, really. Cool. Does, does this strike me as something he would be able to afford to do, like, on the salary that he would be it making? It would take him a while. He'd have to be very frugal. But it's not totally unreasonable. Not if he got the XMI, this XMI grant that he's talking about. XMI does kind of do things like move employees to other positions if they show promise and give them things like grants and stuff to open like subcontracting businesses and stuff you know that it's it's not an easy thing to approve but it is possible yeah so he he yeah i have no idea if this is a realistic goal of his but it's not crazy it's i have no idea if he's going to succeed but it's not unreasonable for him you to have pull that goal. For him. Okay. Um. So okay, he's, he's and very then... willing to talk about his ideas, his entrepreneurial ideas with you, and kind mm -hmm. of. Uh, anytime you ask him about working the front desk or any of those names, he uh, 
thinks very thoughtfully and uh, talks about how much he uh, monitors names and likes to deal with customers and uh, because he wishes to manage his own entrepreneur and gets to get back on entrepreneurial stuff quite quickly. Uh, he doesn't know, seemed, he says he doesn't know the names you're talking about and uh, has no idea about this bomb and he's pretty sure that he was not the one who would have brought it in. He would have filled out the form far better, for sure. <laughs> if you mention the form to him. If not, sure. he's like, oh, well. No, I think, uh, I think Arlene was the one who brought it in. He's like, oh, yeah. She does work the front most of the time. Hmm. She likes to. I don't know if I would hire her to work my ranch's front, but it's her preferred job. Yeah, why? Why, uh, why wouldn't she be a good hire? She's not what you would call a uh, passionate about the business. As an entrepreneur, being passionate about the business is important. What? What is she passionate about? No, I do not know. She doesn't seem like what you would call a passionate person. Frank uh, seemed to think she had a lot of complaints about the job. Would you agree mm. with that? She has many opinions. It's true. She believes that we should get paid more. And that uh, we should be given a better break facilities during the up and down. Do you think if uh, someone offered her uh, a little extra money to maybe not always play things by the book, like uh, uh, so many names, uh, Officer Chan uh, likes it? Would she, she, think she seldom, might be interested in that? She, uh, she seldom follows the book, I think. Officer mm -hmm. Chan and her uh, do not mm -hmm. always get along. On that front, Officer Chan likes to run a tight ship, or lift as it is, and uh, she does not agree that it's required or necessary. Personally, I think it depends on the business you're running. See, my ranch would run looser in certain <laughs> areas, but much stronger in others. Like, Chill. animal handling would have to be very careful, you understand. <laughs> Kill him. <laughs> I don't I think I'm done with W. I think he can go on his way. Let's, let's talk very to Arlene. Very telling. Very telling. So he, he, he gets up and uh, he's got kind of this funny lope where he walks on all six legs at the same time. Kind of shaped like this. Sounds normal to me. Like, I don't know like, what you're talking about. Like a, like a W. Uh, normally you walk on four and use four. Oh, up. I see. But he's, he's a cowboy rancher uh maybe it's where he got his name sub talks because it is kind of like an m <laughs> anyway so he heads off and he's like i'm gonna head on my lunch have a good day and arlene's sitting there staring at you when you come out seeming slightly annoyed that she's last <laughs> You close the door. I don't call her in yet. <laughs> so you bring her in right away, or you go talk to her out there? What do you do? Um, well, she's the last one here, so I think I just go over and, and sit down. I'll okay. talk to her here. She looks at you and goes, Okay, what do you want? You made me wait here 20, 30 minutes already, plus the time beforehand. You know, there are rules on and play breaks and such. I should have had a break 20 minutes ago. See, I didn't think you cared that much about the rules, Arlene. So meta, Arlene. She looks at you like, I care about my breaks. <laughs> I, I have some messages I need to send to my mother. And we're not supposed to use our personal comms units during work hours, so I have to keep it in the locker. We use these internal comm units they're terrible well that that does that does seem unfair yes 
especially in a job where there's very little to do most of the time. So what would you like? Well, don't make me wait. <laughs> um, make you do whatever he goddamn wants. <laughs> I mean, I guess I go through my my same questions. How long you worked here? She says she's worked uh, here for six years, and that she came to this sector to move out into the frontier. And she's working on a large city on this planet, and it, it seemed exciting to begin with. But she ended up stuck in the large city. She keeps thinking she should move off to Otto Hold or Lervik Hold. Or... But then she's like, oh, I should move off planet any time now. They're going to start opening the other systems. But they still haven't because they're waiting till some bullshit about building up the cities and bringing in the proper populations. So they'll have support for moving out. It's all bullshit. I saw it on the news the other day. There's this news. And she talks about... Uh, which you know is kind of like a standard kind of kind of populist news site this series of sites she starts quoting ask her how much she gets paid so uh what else do you want to know from her um i mentioned all the different uh, other customers she's She's, uh, you're asking about that box. Yes, I took that box in. Someone had to do it. No, I, had it was... the, I had the fellow fill out the form, as usual. I'm not, not my fault that he didn't fill it out correctly. These, these woods people never know how to fill anything out properly. They get all this adventure, but they never want to fill out the damn form. I think you can do both in this world, you know. Yeah, yeah. Woods, woods people? Yes, they live off out at the holds. How, how could you tell that he was a... Uh... He had a ooze on him. Everyone's got ooze on them, lives out there. Or a cactus stuck to their shoes. You know, that sort of thing. This one had ooze, so he's probably from Larvick Hold. <laughs> Give me that name again. Lyrvik Hold. It's on the uh, world log sheet. It's region 5. Gotcha. Lyrvik Hold. Interesting. Um, what, did he, uh, what did he look like? I don't know. He had one of those breathers on. It is spore season. Mm. And his voice? Would you recognize his voice if you heard it again? Yes, Did he have any kind of accent? I think I saw one of those on a vid the other day. His name was Batman. <laughs> Everybody sounds like Batman with those things on. They're all like... Just, rawr, 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 rawr. The whole time, and they're whispery. But they don't want to take them off. Not when you're going back outside, and you don't want to get the, make sure you get the seal right. You ever buy one of those things? That seal, some of the seals are terrible. I saw a guy take 25 minutes to put one on trying to get out of a bank. Finally went outside and started coughing. Came back in and demanded to buy one off the man nearby who had a couple extras for his family. And they finally <laughs> he sold them to him. It was a ridiculous situation. That's the problem nowadays. Not proper logistics, you understand. I think that's why XMI should have a union, you understand. So we can have things organized properly. So, am I getting any kind of a read on her? Just let's, just in the... let's roll some dice. I was going to say, does he have to roll? Yeah, he's got to roll. He just wanted to talk to all all the people separately, so. Yeah. I thought it was an amusing scene. Yeah, it was. So, this seems like you're trying to do a read, so that's definitely insight. It's not persuasion. Yeah, insight for sure. Um, and they're all XMI, so you can use XMI if you want to use your charge. Uh, they're all different species, species, but if you just care about it, it would have been human. You don't have human because you're not a human. 
Uh, yeah, I'll spend a charge. Oakley doakley. You rolling? Uh, what's the difficulty? Oh, three. As it's the whole investigation has a three difficulty. Gotcha. Good. Boom. There you go. So, you get from her that she doesn't know who this guy is at all. And you do understand, though, that you're pretty sure... What happened? I swear I moved that up to... Anyways. You're pretty sure that he perhaps tipped her so he didn't have to fill out the form. If you could, did you confront her on this once you figured that out? Or do you not bother? Um, yes, just because it's the only leverage I have. Okay, so and so I would, I would, I would press it to, to get her to try to confess to anything more to get more of a read on her. But it sounds like if once it, once I get the sense that like there weren't any worse crimes, uh, I would yeah, probably so let her off the hook for it. So when you, when you, kind of like hold this on her like hey how did you blah 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 and what about the form she like this he goes yeah okay i took a tip and just let him fill out the form basics it doesn't really matter there's an identifying code i didn't know we would have explosives in it the guy's scanning they killed somebody well it gets scanned everything gets scanned everything in there as far as my scan showed that it was just a standard ooze crops from off at Leptic Hold kind of location. He had ooze on him. He was standard. Looked exactly like every other Is that, is that why you list? like work? Yeah, so I mean, my, my I don't know how much this you want to play out, but like, is that why you want to work the front desk so you can collect these bribes? Is this part of your, you got a whole business set up here? I am building... Taking bribes to ship things? You know? They're not bribes. I just take the odd tip to fill up people's forms for them because they don't know how to do it or they can't see with their stupid masks on. This guy bar barely is whispered these people away. Are, these people are shipping explo explosives that have been used to kill people, and if you yeah, were well, cooperating with that operation, you are an accessory. I don't fine. think you realize how much trouble you're in right now. Until last week, there was no terrorists in this system that nobody anybody knew about, Okay. I was just taking out a tip to fill out forms for people, letting them do their thing. I'll not do it anymore. Besides, I almost have enough for my... I'm getting on the colonization list. I'm going to get off this stupid slime ball. Yeah, okay, go, go tell Chan right now. I'm going to quit. This isn't worth it. I can make the money I need to get off at some place outside. Oh, this is totally so mean. If you have any more information that you're not sharing with me right now. So all I know is that he was some fucking colonist from out near Levick. I mean, it was obvious. And that he brought in the box. And that he said the box was full of organic goods. And it was. I scanned it. I didn't skip scans. I'm not an idiot. I took some things. So I just took a tip. Filled it out. He mumbled his name. I asked him three times. He's like, do we have to worry about that? And I'm like, fine, whatever. And put the box in the back. Mm. Besides the forms, which are way overcomplicated. I, I don't think any place else has forms as complicated and precise. That's all I did. If Chan didn't do that sort of thing, I wouldn't even be able to make these tips. This is one of the reasons she's a great boss is because she demands ridiculous amounts from the customers and gets me tips. <laughs> but she's a tart ass. Come on. All right. So, I mean, if I've, I've pushed her as hard as I can and it doesn't seem like there's anything more than... Yeah, she doesn't give a shit. Girl. She's like, she's expected to be fired. She's not expected to be thrown in prison for this. So, I mean... Unless you're threatening yeah. her with that, she is 
Well, I, I definitely was threatening her with that. <laughs> She, she seems nervous now, but she's basically like that's all she knows. But but yeah, but she, so she, you can seems to be seems to be telling the truth. You can yeah. ask Chan to arrest her and s- stuff if you want. Uh, Chan's probably going to really. fire her anyways. Yeah, we got nothing on her. She's probably insane. Anyway. So if, do you tell Chan what happened? I'm not. Or? I'm not going to tell Chan, but it'll probably event like. I'm not gonna like go out of my way to like okay. clear clear up what her wrongdoing in like my report back to the company. You so guys don't might... really make company reports. You fulfill your contract. So if yeah, I mean, part of our contract is to like to say what we learned here. So like it'll kind of be in there, but I'm not gonna like go into detail about that. So it it could make a circuit, circuitous route back to you know to her boss. Uh, by that time, maybe she'll have already quit. You know. Yeah. Okay. So I'm not gonna cover. I'm not gonna cover for her, but I'm not gonna like go tell her boss. So let's summarize what you got from the investigation. Now that's complete. One, you know that some guy wearing a standard spore mask, talks like Batman, showed up, dropped off a box, which was scanned, didn't fill out the forms correctly, managed to pass over that by a tip to Arlene. And um, uh, that box turned out to actually have the, the biomaterials were actually explosives. One of the explosives accidentally went off on the route upwards, probably due to gravitational shifting, uh, because when it ascends, the gravity changes quite a bit from the low grav planet and caused an explosion. Uh, this material was obviously being shipped out, and the guy was from Larvik Hold uh, because of his dress and the materials he shipped. Yeah, that's basically the most important bit of information. Yeah. Uh, he could have ooze on him from just being in the Lake District, but sure. she, seemed, she seemed convinced that he was from Larvik Hold because of his dress and that sort of thing. You did see... You could kind of see, but the, you don't have a good image. So that's what you guys figured out. Does that make sense? Any yeah. questions? Slater? So we, Paul? Nope. We, we have a general area on Finvar okay. that that okay. signal had been sent to. Is that? Yes. You know, it Region 5... There's actually a couple regions because of the way it was very general. Uh, it wasn't in Finvar City. So you know it's outside of Finvar City, but it's basically it hit the planet, but it didn't go through or touch any of the... You didn't get any of the standard feedback pings that you would get if you're pinging a contact. I mean, if it's a personal hidden away comms unit, but nothing else detected it and got a response. Because when you tend to ping things in, other things sometimes give these kind of ignoring packets and stuff. So when you did your thing, you got very little, and it went out somewhere in the countryside. And yes, it could be auto hold or Levick hold, but... If the guy had it had ooze on him that looked like he'd been dried and sat there for a long period of time, like she described, then he was from Lava Cold. Or at least out that way. Should we go check that out? Yes. And it's a whole city, so we need... We still need more info. The holds are not super large. Um, auto hold is larger than lava hold because auto hold is kind of wild. It's still a little bit of a fortress, um, but it's out on the plains, so it's this kind of like spread out group of ranches. So there's like a central hold where you probably land, and there'd be a bunch of ranches out. Lava hold, as you just kind of know, is very centralized because it's in the middle of the jungle. Like an ooze jungle, but a jungle. Anyways, let's take a break there. I know we're really late, so we'll come back for a very short session. You guys, or we could quit here for the day, but it seems a little early. So, what do you guys think? 
take a break. Okay. So back at nine. Yeah. Do the last hour. Oakley, Oakley. Cool. See you guys. See you. Yeah.